Okay, now I'll be explaining problem 4-101 out of Shigley version 9 for my MAE 3323 Tulsa class. Um, let's see, and so, getting late, my mind is sort of going, but here we go. This problem has a bar with a simple support here, and there's a cable right here attached to point B, and there's a cable right here attached at point F, 38 inch long for each of these cables in the unloaded position. And we're going to apply, excuse me, 5,000 pounds acting downward. And so we have all of this geometry. And so we cannot calculate all of the reactions in this structure using statics. So it's an, an indeterminate structure. But uh, we do need to be careful because what we need to do with two unknown forces acting in the cables we need to make sure that the problem is statically determinate before we proceed ahead with it and so we don't want to make too many things unknowns and solve for them or we will not get uh, correct answers so if there were if there were no two cables then our problem would be under defined because all we have is a pin joint and A, and that would be a mechanism, okay? It wouldn't be a structure. So this thing is a structure where the loads can be defined by statics. If we keep our pin joint at A, and if we treat one of these cables as a force that can be determined as a function of the other. So I'm going to pretend, I'm going to then treat the load in this cable between D and F as an unknown and and what i mean is the the load carried up here at the support above the cable i'm going to treat that as the indeterminate reaction and so treat that as a force and if i knew that force i could calculate the reaction at e and i could calculate the reaction at a because everything is now statically determinate so that's how i'm going to treat the problem so it is over constrained by a degree one not two now, this is a picture the author shows in his solution. I want you to understand that this force called FBE is applied above the cable, up at the ceiling, not here in the way I'm interpreting the problem. And the same thing that the force FD uh, is applied above this cable, up here at this ceiling, that's the reaction that I'm treating as the unknown reaction. So. Let's go to work solving this problem. So I'm going to assume that x equals 0 at point D, the right hand in, and my x increases as I head to the left. I'll make cuts at any x, and I'm going to look right, which means I don't have to do the statics right now for the reaction at A. I will have to do some statics, though. There will be three regions that have moments, 1, 2, and 3. Then I'll have energy in this table and energy in that table to deal with. Again, my loads are applied at the upper end of the cables up at the wall. I'm going to presume that I don't know this force that I call FDF, but I'm going to do enough statics to write FBE in terms of FDF to keep the problem a statically determinant problem. So, summing moments about point A uh, uh, is an FBE times 16 minus 5,000 times 32 plus FDF times 48. I'll set that sum of moment equal to zero, and I will solve for FBE, which gives us 10,000 minus 3 FDF, and I'll store that in FBE, so that's now known. Now I'm going to start writing my deflection terms. <laughs> I'll have a region 1 and write the moment, a region 2 and write the moment, a region 3 and write the moment, and then the energies of the deflections that come from the force term, I'll write those as well. And I'll work from the right back toward the left. So, moment in region 1, which is right here, is just FDF times X. And then the partial of the moment in region 1 with respect to FDF is X. It's just that X term. Then in region 2, I still have this F times X, but I'm going to have a 5,000 times X minus 16. FDF times X minus 5,000 times X minus 16. And the partial with respect to FDF of moment 2 is still just X. 
I'm going to get something a little more sophisticated here because this FBE is written in terms of FDF, and I'll show that in a moment. So moment three is still the FDF times X minus the 5,000 times X minus 16 plus the FBE times X minus 32, but FBE will have this thing right here substituted in for it when I take the partial. MathCAD will substitute and expand. When I take the partial, the partial comes out to be 96 minus 2 times x. Let me just show you. I can do a little bit of interactive and show you how that happens. If I take this thing, copy, paste, and let's go ahead and simplify. Okay. Uh, no, let's not simplify. Let's just do a symbolic equal. Uh, symbolic equal. I have the FDF times X and uh, let's see, X minus 30. Well, it did a little bit of symbolics, but it definitely did this 10,000 substitution in there. Uh, and if I do simplify it, let's go back and simplify it. It'll make taking the partial easier. So let's simplify. Okay, and the partial of this with respect to FDF is a 2 times an X minus 48. Okay, and so minus 2 times minus 48 is a 96. And I also have a 2F. So this partial came out right. So just showing you a little bit of extra stuff. I'm going to go ahead and delete that from the document. So I've got my moment in the three regions, but now I've got to deal with the force in the axial members. So force of the axial member BE, I'm going to call force 1, and it's just FBE. But remember, FBE is a function here of FDF. So the partial with respect to FDF is going to be that minus 3. There's the minus 3. Then the uh, force in cable DF is FDF. And the partial of this F2 thing with respect to FDF is just a 1. Now, the deflection... Uh, at the location of force FDF is the F times the partial of F with respect to the load over AE. So F times partial over AE over the length, then F2 times its partial over AE integrated over the length, plus the first bending term M1 times the partial of M1 with respect to FDF over EI plus the second moment term, plus the third moment term. Now what I'm going to do is pull each of these terms out and show you what they look like. So F1 times the correct partial is a 9 times FDF minus 3000. And when that's integrated between the limits of 0 and 38, here's what we get. The F2 term is here. Integrating it, that's what we get. The M1 term, moment number 1 term, is here. Times, moment times the partial is there. And the integral is given. Moment 2 times the partial is here. And here's the integral. And moment 3 times the partial is kind of long here. But here is the integral. I will almost certainly be giving you a printout of this thing to have a look at. Uh, finally, going back, the delta FDF, the deflection at the load FDF, which is all of this stuff, is given right here. Here is the entire uh, uh, the entire term. But this deflection up at the top of that axial member, I know happens to be zero. So I'm going to use that to solve for that force. So. That force is, take the deflection equation right here, set it equal to zero. Plug in values for A, E, and E, I so we can go to numbers as fast as possible. So take the deflection, set it equal to zero, and then substitute for A, E, E, I, appropriate values. Solve it for FDF, but don't print out too many digits. Let's show six significant digits. And it comes up with the 2014.67. That's exactly what the author has. 
So now I know the load FBF. From my earlier statics, I have the value of FBE is 10,000 minus 3 times FBF. That comes out to be a 3,956. And then doing the statics, FA, and, which, and I'm doing it from sum of forces. So uh, FA is equal to uh, the sum of the other forces. So that was a 970. Uh, and then finally, the deflection at B is simply an axial member. And the deflection of axial members is FL over AE, where the force at B is FBE. Okay, times the length of the rod over AE is 0.026 inches. The deflection where the load D is applied is FL over AE, uh, L being 38 inches, FBF given 2015, AE is given, and so here's the deflection at the far end of the beam. Um, interesting to note that the deflection at B is larger than the deflection at the end of the beam. I would not necessarily have guessed that, but uh, so be it. To get the deflection at C, we would have to do more Castigliano. We'd have to place a dummy load where that 5,000 pound loads are located, take partials with respect to the dummy load to get its deflection. I'm not going to do that. This problem already has enough stuff done, so I'm going to call this problem to an end and you may have heard me yawn once or twice so i'm going to call it a day as well that's the end of this video